Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder. How do you move beyond failure? All of us experience um, failure, and it can be a very devastating uh, experience, but you don't want to get stuck in it. You want to move beyond it. There's a wonderful story in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, about the disciples who experienced failure one night when they were fishing. They've been fishing all night, and the Bible says that they came back to shore early in the morning after a, a night of fishing with empty nets. But they moved beyond failure. I want you to see what happens. It says, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night and haven't caught anything. That's failure. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish, their nets began to break. They had failed the previous night. All night long, they were casting their nets into the water, hoping to catch fish. They would pull the nets up, and there was no fish in the nets. They had failed. Have you ever cast your net into the, to the water of possibilities? You pulled them up, and there was nothing there. Failure. Have you ever thrown your net out in the job market, and you knew you had that particular job, and you pulled it up, and there's nothing there? Have you ever thrown your net out in a relationship and you knew you had caught someone just for you, but then when you really pulled up the net to see what was there, that wasn't fish, that was nothing but seaweed. What do you do when you've experienced failure? And especially because you have, you've done your part, you've, they worked all night, they, they fished all night, but they caught nothing. Well, the key is, not getting stuck in the failure, but moving beyond the failure. And the way you move beyond the failure is, first of all, asking yourselves, what are the possible reasons for the failure? And secondly, what will be my responses to my failure? What are the reasons for the failure? Well, sometimes the reason for the failure is found in verse 4. <clears throat> it says, when he finished speaking, he said, to Simon put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Maybe one of the reasons for their failure was that they were fishing too close to the edge. Um, they were playing it safe. Jesus said, if you want the big fish, you have to be willing to have faith and go out there to where the big fish are, in the deep. They were fishing near the shore because they wanted to play it safe. And God doesn't always bless you when you're, when you're fishing close to the shore, when you're fishing close to the shore of your possibilities. It's only when you move out into the deep and say, you know what, uh, maybe God doesn't want to bless me where I am because God doesn't want me to get stuck here. Maybe God is making life miserable for me right at the shore's edge because if I succeed, then I might get stuck in a place that is beneath where I could possibly be in life. Sometimes you ought to thank God for some failures. Because if certain relationships, for example, had not failed in your life, you would right now be miserable because you would be stuck in a relationship that was never meant for you. Sometimes we fail because we are aiming too long. Sometimes we're failing because we have this overnight success syndrome. They fished all night and they wanted to give up. Well, sometimes you, you just can't fish in the night. Sometimes you got to extend it to the morning and maybe extend it to the afternoon and then extend it to the night. Um, we like the quick fix. We are spoiled by instantaneity. We want what we want when we want what we want. But sometimes the fish are not biting at night and you must be willing to say, you know what, if, it, if I don't catch the fish right now, I'm willing to keep on keeping on and not give up.
Paul said, and let us not become weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. And then perhaps the primary reason they didn't catch any fish is because all that night they were in the boat by themselves. When Jesus was in the boat with them, that's what made the difference. And having God in your boat is the absolute key to success. A poet put it this way, I can't, God, you never said I could. You can, God, you always said you would. So you know some of the reasons for failure, aiming too low, fishing too close to the shore, or the overnight sensation, the overnight sensation syndrome, or not having Jesus in your boat. Well, they failed, but they moved beyond it. And whatever your failure is, so can you move beyond it if you respond right. Life is not about what happens to you. Life is about how you respond to what happens to you. It's not what people do to you. It's how you respond to what people do to you. It's not what life brings you. It's how you respond to what life brings you. You can't help the fact that the fish are not biting, but you can control how you will respond. And here are the responses. Three of them don't work, but one of them will. One is we clam up. We go into a shell. We have a pity party with a whole lot of balloons. We clam up. We say, oh, I've been fishing all night and I don't have anything to show for it. That is not the proper response for those who want to move beyond failure. You get stuck in failure when you clam up. And then another uh, response is not clam up, but blow up. You become angry, you become bitter, you lash out at other people, you become envious of other people, you look at the other people on the lake and you're gossiping about them because they are catching some fish and you don't have any fish in your net. Listen, brothers and sisters, if the Lord is blessing your neighbor, that means he's in the neighborhood. That means if they're catching fish over here, that means that there are fish there in the lake. So don't clam up and don't blow up and be hostile towards other people. And then here's another response. Don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, if God be for you, who then can be against you? God is a God that can turn things around. And that's what God did. And God turned things around for the disciples because they didn't clam up, they didn't blow up, they didn't give up, they looked up. And when they looked up, Jesus said, no, I know you fished all night, I know you have failed, but let's try it one more time. Let's go out into deep water. And Peter said, Lord, we fished all night, but because you said do it, we're going to do it. And when they dropped their nets in the water, fish came from everywhere. Fish came from Catfish Boulevard. They came from Perch Place. Uh, they came from every corner of the lake, and they had so many fish that uh, their nets almost broke. Because anytime you have in your boat with you Long John Savior, Jesus, or you have Jesus Crab Shack, or when you have Jesus who is Captain D. Liver, I promise if you don't give up, you will see that you can move beyond failure. What about you? Will you clam up? Will you blow up? Will you give up? Or will you look up? The fish is coming. Get your skillet ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. For that person who's been fishing all night, or multiple nights, and they don't have anything in their nets. May this word speak to them so that they won't give up, but look up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us. Another powerful point to ponder. As every day we spend meaningful moments with the master. God bless you. And don't forget, as we always say, stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. God bless you.